I think it's important as an artist to be versatile and to be able to uh, express yourself and, and try new things and to not be afraid to take the steps. I think it's really important to, to be fearless as an artist and to just have this, uh, the, the confidence to say like, fuck what everybody else thinks, I'm gonna do my program and it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, I'm gonna do me, you know? My name is Ian Michael Ferguson. Um, I publish my art under this name Hidian, or you can say Hydean. It's a, either pronunciation is fine. And this is a nickname that I had since a very long time ago, and I just continue to use it to sign my works under this name. It's a made up name, you know, so I like to have this mysterious vibe with my artworks. I grew up in San Diego and um, I come from a family of artists. And um, so like m my mom uh, is like a very amazing watercolor painter and artist. And, um, and my father was a farmer in rural North Carolina. And uh, he's also an opera singer, like for this army chorus uh, many years ago. And he lived in Germany and stuff. So he was like traveling around Europe singing. So like I grew up having this art background. My grandfather was like a really amazing artist as well and designer and photographer and stuff. So I have this art in, in my family background. I had this nervous breakdown at work one day and the company I worked for said, oh, you need to go see this psychologist person. And then I go see him and telling him about, I have these crazy like, um, mood stuff where I'm like very happy, you know, like, like very happy. And then I get like very, very sad. And he says, you have this bipolar disorder stuff. And I'm like, oh man, you know, this is like, but I understand. I'm like, I'm this guy, you know, my whole world that I built is like, it, it crosses over, um, many boundaries. It's, it's like, um, the, the people are very ambiguous, you know, uh, and, and there's a cultural diversity. There's like so many different things going on that it's not one specific culture or one specific ethnicity or one, one, uh, one thing. Or it's, it's all these many things, you know, it's a melting pot of just so many things that are like, because like uh, so much of my work is like visual memoirs of um, my life experience and things that I see and get inspired by. Since I was a child, uh, I used to, for fun, I would get the Sunday paper, you know, like this newspaper would come and they would have these ads, like department store ads for like clothing and stuff and these, these people wearing the clothes and I just thought it'd be funny if I get the eraser and I erase uh, the print. You can actually, I don't know how I figured out to do this, but I just started erasing the image and, and because it's this newsprint stuff, you can, it'll just erase. And then I started making these people like blobby, you know, like these big kind of like blobby people. And I said, these people look cool. And then I just kept making them until they didn't look like people anymore. And they started look like these alien creatures. And my dad was talking about these troglodytes, which are like people in the, they're like cave dwellers, you know? And I said, ah, okay, I'm going to make these characters that are like hermits and they live in these caves, you know, so they're the Herm troglodytes and I call them the Herms for short. And they're like these alien creatures and they like, they live in these caves, you know, so I make the Herm troglodytes and then I make the people and the Herms are more like uh, rudimentary. I call them like child style drawings. So they're much more like very easy to do. They, they take no effort at all. And they, they just, I just dump them out of my mind. They're just all freestyle and they're extremely fun to draw. They, they, they're very therapeutic for me and they're like reflections of my personality and stuff like this too. So I, I tell many stories with the Herms and the people, you know. Coming from the West Coast, uh, California and stuff like, 
we don't really have like really these these old buildings and stuff, these old architectures, you know. Like I think the only place in San Diego is may, maybe like Balboa Park has these old like Mexican like mission style areas that are really cool programs. But I was very disenchanted with the architecture in Southern California and these very boring um, Lego houses and stuff, you know, and the stucco, just just nasty buildings. I didn't didn't like the way they made me feel. And then when the first time I went to visit Chicago, I just fell in love with this brownstones and they had these medieval type buildings there. And I was, I've always been like, since I was a child, I've always been very inspired by like places like Prague and Budapest and stuff. And like, and I knew that eventually I was going to get to Europe, you know, which like in, in the long run, after living in Chicago and New York and being like very inspired by both of these cities and, and especially the architecture, like the way the architecture makes me feel. Like I like walking down the street and you have the brownstones, the row of the brownstones, and this give you a very special feeling, you know, this romantic feeling. And I never forget the first time I saw the row of the brownstones. I say, this, these buildings look like a bookshelf, right? And the brownstone facades, they look like the ends of books. And I'm like, you can learn so much from these buildings that you can read them. They're like, they're like literature, you know? So they're very inspiring to me, these, these buildings. And I like the way that they make me feel. When I'm in like Southern California and stuff, I don't have this feeling, like not even close, you know? So I like to have this old like history stuff and like after going to like in Chicago and living in New York, this is when I just, I, I, I call it like reverse manifest destiny. It's like the original manifest destiny was like people from the East Coast coming to the West Coast, you know, but I'm like, no, I need to go backwards in time. I need to go, I need to see the people that came before me. I need to see the history that has come before me in order to like understand myself and like these, these inspirations and stuff, you know. My first time I came to Europe was 2018, and that's, that's when I came. Um, I visited like Nice and Monaco and, and Italy. I went to Portofino and I went to Prague. And the first time I was in Prague was like crazy, man. I had like this experience where I had this like ghost experience in the Airbnb where I was uh, sleeping with my my um, my buddy and I, we got this Airbnb, and he's sleeping in the, the loft bed up here, and I'm in the the bed down below, you know, and uh, um, we were in this very very old building, hundreds and hundreds of years old, you know, ancient style building in Prague, and and um, and we both wake up at like three in the morning and have this really intense feeling like maybe we're getting robbed or I felt like maybe there was someone in the building with us and I could feel like the presence of someone there. And I've always been very open-minded to these things like, you know, like um, um, these otherworldly types of, uh, like I like to think the world is magical and this universe is a very magical place and, you know, and there's other stuff going on, you know, so I think, oh man, like what, the, I'm feeling some vibe in this room, what's going on? but I can't see this person or if there's like someone here I don't see, but I feel someone there. And then I close my eyes and this person like revealed himself to me in my mind. I like could see this like medieval guy, like, like in my mind, you know, just like popped in my head. And I said, Oh my God, like maybe this, like this could be this person here, you know? And then the next day I'm walking around the city in Prague and I see all the spires, you know, I'm obsessed with this, the spikes, the pointy stuff, you know, love this. Like, it's why I do all the pointy shoes and I make the buildings with the spikes and everything because I love this stuff. And, uh, and I was just crazy inspired by Prague. I think from this ghost experience, I, I, I'm like, man, like I really just need to make this kind of work because it makes me feel good. And I'm obsessed with folk art too, so I try and make like a fusion of the things, you know? I feel like a really strong connection to this outsider art and folk art, outsider art world. I, I, like the Henry Darger stuff, I really connect with, you know, and these like folk artists, um, like Grandma Moses and stuff. Like I really love these works. 
And I, I find like a kinship with this kind of this kind of work because it's like this self-taught kind of style. And I consider myself a self-taught artist, even though I like had some guidance, you know, from my mom in high school and things like that. Everything I do today, I'm just like teaching myself and trying to figure out like that's why I experiment with these different mediums with like the gouache and the acrylic and I use these like these crazy color color um, like mediums these mixed media stuff that like maybe shouldn't go together but I just do it anyways because I think I, maybe this works maybe it doesn't who knows let's give it a try and uh, and ever since I like really just like like sort of like zoned in and put the laser beam focus on this then, then everything really started to like happen for me, you know. This is my first show in Paris um, and my first time in Paris too. So I'm very happy and extremely humbled and grateful for uh, Bamba Kamara, for this uh, Bim Bam Gallery for having me here. It's like really like, I'm just so, so humbled by this. It's a really a beautiful program. And um, so the title of the show, Inform de Cone, it's Cone Shaped. And I name it this because um, these works are all about the culmination of, of these like experiences and circumstances and situations that, that are, are, are heavy and intense and stuff. And they come to a head, this cone shape, this, this point. It's like this, this, this point of intensity, like in the past several years, you know, with the COVID and all this stuff, like the, globally, like we're always at this tipping point. We're always like, everything's at this very intense moment, you know, and like you can feel this tension like uh, all over the world, you know, and this, this, this point of apex. And so like a lot of these pieces in the show are about these, these kind of like um, pinpoint experiences, you know, that I want to portray in, in the show, you know. For me, a, a solo exhibition is like the highest honor as an artist. I think it's the ultimate honor that you can have is your own show. And so I think to have a solo show, it can't just be about the paintings. It can't just be about this. It has to be a whole environment for me personally. I think you really have to have more than just what's on the walls. I think it's very important to have some kind of installation work that helps you define the world that you're in and creating. And I wanted to bring one of my characters to life in, in, in the best way I could with what I know how to do. And, and so I created this dress, you know, and, and this character and the mask was really important. Um, I had already been drawing these masks like before COVID, you know, and then it just so happens that everyone's wearing masks, you know. So, um, so it kind of ties in with that too, but um, the mask is, is sort of like, um, it's like an inverted Statue of Liberty thing, you know, with the, with the spires. And you know, like the pointy boots, I love spiky things, you know? And so like, it's just my favorite mask. I love this mask. And, um, and I really wanted to bring it to life somehow um, with this character, you know? And I think it came out really wonderful. I, I'm very, very happy with it. I need to do this art stuff. It makes me so happy. It's a big form of therapy for me with this mental health stuff. And I see the effects of this art because it makes other people happy and it brings this joy and inspiration to other people. So I see that I'm doing something that's not just for myself, it's for other people to enjoy and to get inspiration from. And it brings happiness to their life. So then it makes me fulfilled with what I'm doing here on this uh, floating ball, you know, this planet Earth stuff.